Cameron Chai, bring you another episode of Azo TV. Today I'm speaking to Dr. Kurt Marcott from Light Light Solutions, and he's going to tell us a bit about his experiences using the Anasys Instruments Nano IR system. Thanks very much, Cameron. Uh, we've been uh, interested in studying polymer uh, systems for a long time with conventional infrared microspectroscopy, and one of the problems is a lot of the interesting things happen at a spatial resolution that can't be obtained by regular not, uh, FDIR. So. I got pretty excited when I saw the combination of uh, an AFM detection method for uh, infrared spectroscopy, the combination of AFM and infrared as a way to get more information from uh, polymeric systems to learn things that we can't see any other way. And the particular, I want to talk about a couple of systems where I think it's useful. A lot of polymer Bren samples you can study by AFM and you may get uh, certain domains that you can see in the sample but you don't have any way to identify it and the spatial resolution isn't good enough to do it. But with this technique the spatial resolution is more than an order of magnitude better than conventional IR and you can go into a, a sample and pick out different domains and get individual signatures that help you identify uh, the compositions at various locations. The specific system, though, that we're pretty excited about is a biodegradable polymer system that forms microdomains. It's really just one, it's a copolymer, but it's one molecule, but when the film is formed in the final product, it has portions of it that are more crystalline or less crystalline. And using this technology, we're able to go into a sample like that and pull out different regions that have dramatically different spectra. These are collected at room temperature, so you can see that one part of the sample has a different uh, chemical nature than another. Uh, there's a particularly interesting application where you bring in a heated AFM tip to a sample and generate a, a defect in, in the sample and then uh, you let it cool off and recrystallize and you can imagine that as a model for some sort of an inclusion or perturbation inside the sample. And if we take a closer look at that. Uh, here's an example where the tip was moved in and we collect a series of infrared spectra across that and you can see how dramatically the spectra change as we go through there. And uh, this is the carbonyl region of the spectrum where it's well understood that the sharp band here is crystalline and the shoulder here is more amorphous material. On the other hand, these are backbone skeletal modes where we don't have that much of an idea of what the band assignments are. But in this case, we can we know that the most crystalline point in that sample is position 24, and as we move away from it, we can see dramatic changes in the carbonyl where the the uh, more crystalline carbonyl bands are disappearing and the more amorphous ones are appearing. So that's the idea. And we at the same time have a different region of the spectrum where we don't understand the bands and we see something dramatic growing in. And this is enabling us to help assign uh, uh, view, view materials at a level that has never been possible for, before with uh, conventional FTIR microspectroscopy and uh, I think opens new ways to new understanding that we'll be able to get on polymeric materials going forward and I'm really excited about the prospects of, of this new capability. All right, Curtin, you're also saying that this, this technique has big implications for polymers that are being reinforced with things like carbon nanotubes? Yes, I think that when you put carbon nanotubes in a sample, for example, its processing may change. It may not cure at the same time as before, and people are wondering why. Well, with this technique, you could go in near an inclusion of some sort, like a carbon nanotube, and collect spectra near it and further away and see how the molecular structure of the way the polymer is recrystallizing is changed by the inclusion of the nanotube. Get some understanding on how maybe to better design the materials. There's a lot of work that le that's left to be done, but the technique is certainly showing promise for those kinds of studies, I believe. And again, the, the, the advantage of the nano IR system is that it's got that resolution to be able to, to work its way across, for instance, the interface between the, the matrix and the, the, the nanoparticles. Yes, there's, it, it's pretty clear that for the right kind of sample, uh, you can get 100 nanometer spatial resolution, which the, is more than well over one more order of magnitude better than conventional IR. So these are things that couldn't be done with existing capability that can now be done with this tool, I believe. So there's there's big potential for this to be used in a, in a whole range of, of polymer applications, but also other, other sorts of applications? Oh yes, polymers is just one small area that we focused on today. There are many other uh, things that could develop similarly, looking at biological tissue and skin and hair or other things like that uh, in the future. And, 
there's probably a PhD thesis or two in each one of those that could come out uh, someday with more in-depth work. This instrument's only been out for about a year and I think we're just scratching the surface of the kinds of things it might be able to do. And when you suddenly have a new pair of glasses to look at a material that you didn't have before, you can start to pull, pull out insights that, uh, and think about things differently. And I think that this capability will let us be able to do that. And just, just as a comparison, what, what's the spatial resolution of a, a regular IR system? I would say practically it's about 3 to 10 microns. Uh, is about as good as you can do compared to 100 nanometers. So that's a dramatic step change, I would say. All right, then, Curtin, if anybody wants more information about the Nano IR system, they can find that presumably on the Anasys Instruments site? Yes. I'm a scientific advisor for Anasys, and you can also go to the lightlightsolutions.com and if you want to get a hold of me, and I can help discuss whether it's maybe a technique that might be useful for what you're trying to do. No worries. All right, if anybody wants more information, they can also go to anasysinstruments.com. And uh, thank you very much for telling us about your experiences with the Nano IR system, Kurt. Okay, thanks you very much, Cameron.